Alrighty, what is going up y'all? Hopefully you guys are doing well. And today we're going to be again in this devotional doctrine series. And again, like last week I said, we are officially halfway through this devotional doctrine series. And it's been a long time coming, but yet I've also enjoyed this time. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and have been blessed throughout the messages that have been uh, spoken through this. And so today we're going to be in chapter 16, which uh, if it's familiar to especially the boys that well, like when we got this devotional doctrine series at uh, Camp Standing Stones 2019, it was um, they skipped their track <laughs> in order to uh, just relax back in the the dorm room where we shared this message. We went through this message together. It was actually chapter 16, and so chapter 16 will be pretty much a rendition of what we discussed that day, which is called the strangest thing Christians believe. And so, I mean, just this little topic about this, it'll be called this, it should have been called the strangest things uh, Christians believe because there's more than just one thing that is pretty much strange and that we as Christians believe. And so before we get to this, let us all pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us this time, Lord. I pray you be with me as I uh, speak your words. And I pray you be with uh, the listeners as they listen and take in your word for their lives, Lord. I thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, so like the the title says, it's going to get strange, so <laughs> be prepared. So pretty much the introductory paragraph says this. It says, let's just be honest. The Christian faith is weird. We believe some of the strangest stuff. Think about it. Christians believe there is a perfectly good and holy God who is one but also three, who created everything, has revealed himself to us in written form, controls everything, but also gives us the ability to act of our own will, and has been working out a plan throughout all history to rescue the world from the mess of our choices that we have made. And of course, that's just a little bit of what we've covered in this book. But there's one belief that is especially unique, one that has been the center of just about every controversy about Jesus over the last 2,000 years. Who, or rather, what he is. And so pretty much... It says that, but then it, it goes into more deeper uh, meaning. Like, it gives us two topics. <clears throat> and so, uh, topic number one, <clears throat> it's pretty much like, what is Jesus? It's like, well, Jesus is a human being. I mean, he was born of, like, a mom, just like we are. And, like, we, he lived on this earth as well. He worked hard. He had some friends. He, of course, he, he eat, sleep. Uh, he was sick, hungry, thirsty, and so pretty much his experiences here on earth made like made him like have a deeper connection with us and so it's it's pretty much like he knows how to like what humans feel as well and so even though he's the a divine character he he stooped down low and pretty much experienced life just as we have and so he got pr very personal with us and he can empathize with us uh now that well pretty much i mean he he knew before but then he's like he he took it to a deeper level because, of course, his love for us and his purpose to uh, save us when he died on that cross as that perfect sacrifice. But yet here it says it's like he's more than just human being as well because like uh, the previous messages that we've uh, talked about, he is also uh, God. Of course, it's like he is three in one. And so he is not three separate entities acting as one unit, but he's just like one unit. But then he's also three as well so we, we really, really don't know how that is possible but of course right here luke chapter 1 verse 37 it says for nothing will be impossible with god <laughs> and that brings up the second uh little um you could say topic that we're going to discuss about how uh the, one of the strangest things we as christians believe and so before that we will begin in chapter 30 i will read this passage for you guys and we'll go all the way to chapter 30 well, verse 37 well chapter 37 we'll be here all day it says the angel said to her do not be afraid mary for you have found favor with god and behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the lord god will give him the throne of his father david and he will reign over the house of jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end mary said to the angel how can this be since i'm a virgin the angel answered and said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of Most High will overshadow you. And for the reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth, 
has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who is called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing will be impossible with God. I mean, of course, God made pretty much everything from just his words, and so since he did that, I mean, this task should be like a walk in the park. Well, even easier than a walk in the park, like eating cake. No, even easier than eating cake. <laughs> and so, uh, pretty much in here, it's the second thing that happened. Is like, how did the impossible happen? And in this case, of course, uh, the barren woman became pregnant. And of course, the other strange thing is how a virgin will conceive a child. And so, uh, I remember having this one conversation with one of my friends. Uh, I don't know. I forgot what we talked about, but it's like one thing led to another, and then she, like, it led to this actually, uh, and then she. I can't really quote it word for word, but she says something along the lines of, so you expect me to believe that a holy sperm came and impregnated um, Mary, and so that's how she conceived Jesus? And then my response to her was, yeah. And so, in other words, it's like, for her, it was, it was something very strange to grasp the concept of, because, of course, here on Earth, how are babies made? And so, uh, getting into that topic, you probably want to talk to someone who you're very comfortable with and talk about the birds and the bees, but if not, and you want to contact me personally, well, I, I can go over it with you as well, if you trust me enough. But, I mean, just just make sure you trust that person or talk the birds and the bees about. But anyway, and so she said, did God get it on with Mary? Or how did that happen? Well, the thing is, of course, God is, well, he... He transcends us. <laughs> so how, like, he's probably not going to do that. And so because, of course, Mary is his creation. And so he's not he's not going to do that thing with her. And of course, he's not married to her as well. So it's it's like, ew, it's my child. <laughs> and so that, that was a concept she didn't grasp or she could not grasp. But with us, it's like, I really don't know how that happened as well. But, of course, the impossible happened. She became pregnant somehow. Because, of course, uh, of the sin nature. Jesus could not be blemished with a sin. So he could not have an a earthly father. He needed a heavenly father, which, of course, is God the Father. And so that was how uh, he became that perfect sacrifice. Because there was no spotless of sin in him. Alrighty. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, pretty much um, those two topics. So what Jesus is, of course, he is um, a man, but he is also God at the same time. And so, and then the other part was he was uh, conceived through a virgin, of course. I mean, how can a virgin uh, conceive if she doesn't, of course, have the birds and the bees? But yeah, God did it somehow. And so those are the pretty much the strangest things, like an, another one of the strangest things that we as Christians believe to happen, because if those things didn't happen then we would probably still be um, swimming in our sin. And so it's it's pretty much, um, uh, you, you could say it, it, it was a strange way of God to go about it, but it needed to be done in order for us to be saved. And so, I mean, if God did it somehow, then I, I would just like thank him instead of saying, you know, why? Why that strange things? I would not question it. All I really do ever care about is being saved. And so that pretty much that's what got all... Uh, cared about as well and so praise be to god for that and do not be ashamed because of jesus's shame that he bore on that cross so you cannot be ashamed of your sins anymore and so all right pretty much that was uh chapter 16 in a nutshell hopefully you guys have been uh, blessed and learned something throughout uh, this and so let's all pray to god uh heavenly father i pray that you please be with oh i thank you for being with us as we uh dwell Oh, dove into this message, Lord Heavenly Father. And I pray that this message may be uh, in our hearts, even though it's very strange, Lord, that we may be able to proclaim it to others or just uh, like find it within ourselves to um, uh, b believe that, you know, it was you who went through this uh, strange things in order for us to be uh, same, saved, Lord Heavenly Father. And so uh, we thank you so much for uh, everything that you've ever done, Lord. So I thank you so much. And I pray for everyone uh, still through these coronavirus times, Lord. Now, who knows when it's going to be over or when it's going to end, Lord. But we'll have a great testimony to tell when it is, Lord. And also a great testimony to tell through this message that we have learned. So I thank you so much. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Alrighty, y'all. Be safe and God bless.